Hello, I'm P. Tum, and I wanted to talk to you today about grime. Grime, <coughs> I slept on grime for a long time. Uh, it, was, it was definitely after The Wire magazine did their primer on it uh, that I even first heard any grime, although uh, I do remember hearing a, a Dizzy Rascal track on the radio and uh, being aware there was some kind of buzz attached to it, but it was fix up, look sharp, and the beat threw me because it's not really a, a typical grime uh, kind of beat, is it? And so I kind of lost interest and moved on, didn't see what the fuss was all about. And then for some reason, I downloaded a Wiley track, Doorway, which although I didn't really see what was important about it, it was, it was in, in, excited me enough to, uh, to download the rest. And uh, then I kind of got it, and then I, that led me into the whole grime instrumental uh, thing. Uh, as well, and then I realised that there's all this other stuff, the MC-led uh, uh, grime, which immediately, uh, like a lot of people I suppose, I thought that this uh, music was an incredibly potent um, indigenous uh, culture that therefore would inevitably um, explode in everyone's faces and uh, it would be a new paradigm uh, several years down the line as we all know this hasn't happened um, for various reasons which i only can only dimly guess at uh, but um, you know for a time i really thought it had to because for some reason you know that suddenly after years of experimenting with disappointing hybrids like British hip-hop, Brit-hop, for fuck's sake, uh, this, you know, black youth culture, call it an urban underclass, whatever you, you want, found its voice and found a way to articulate itself, and of course, there it suddenly was, you know, and to me, somebody who came late to, uh, the whole blog and message board, internet culture, uh, you know, for years I've been using the uh, internet, not like an information superhighway, but like an information b-road, and uh, so this kind of accentuated the sense that, that here was this massive underground thing going on under the noses of the mainstream, uh, undiscovered, uh, and so I naturally assumed that uh, yes, as I say, it was uh, it was it was it was going to uh, become a new paradigm. Uh, the thing that so I think that that I, you know I was a, an evangelist because <laughs> if you're if you're a music head or whatever and you, you start trying to sort of tell people about this stuff and they're like well what, what? they haven't heard it they just they, they don't even know it's out there somehow. I mean, I suppose nowadays it's, it's filtering through, but for, um, you know, for the last few years, since 2005 or something, you know, you take grime to, pe to people I know anyway, and they say, well, what's that? Um, and then you say, sometimes you'd even say to them, well, you, you know Dizzy Rascal, and they'd be like... So, it's, 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 this seems surprising to me, because this seemed to be the uh, most important kind of cohesive youth subculture or a, 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 you know almost a, a, an expression of a, of a, a time and a and place in, in the historical continuum kind of thing the most important since possibly rave or you know punk even it was it was the sound of, of something um, finding its voice. Uh, so that was in inspiring. But just as a musician as well, the idea that these funny little Fruity Loops kind of tunes, instrumentals, could actually operate in a way that they would, you know, be meaningfully uh, appreciated by random youth um, 
it was inspiring to me because it just it it kind of it's, it's where I'm coming from. <laughs> <coughs> The simplicity of those little tunes did not fuck off. Felt like that, that really loosened me up as a, as an artist. Sounds like cunty, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyway. 